if we have this hormonal shift, which is also followed by uh, potentially by a neurotransmitter tra- shift that I want to talk to you about, mm-hmm. what what is the upside? Where is the brain going mm-hmm. as these things are shifting? And what are the new things that are coming online for the menopausal woman? And I think if if we understood that, we could weather the storm a little bit better. Yes. And I love that you're interested in that part. So when I was writing the book, I had this super long part about puberty pregnancy and how they really help menopause make sense. And then Mm. I thought, oh, everybody always says that I I overdo it with the science. And so I shortened it and shortened it. But oh oh my God, I love that part so much. Can I can I elaborate? Yeah, please. And you guys, yeah, oh, yeah, tell us. Give it to us now. I love this. Yeah, this is like a one hundred percent neuroscientist take hmm. on beautiful women's brains as we go through reproductive changes. So, what happens at puberty for both boys and girls is that the connection with the reproductive system turns on, and it is important to realize that the major drivers of evolution or mm-hmm. having sex and having children mm-hmm. and being able yeah. to feed yourself, right? So a huge mm-hmm. part of your brain is actually wired to respond to reproductive yeah. health. This is just evolutionarily yeah. sound information, just we know that. There's a huge part of the brain that is in network with the reproductive mm-hmm. system. So a puberty, humans are supposed to start having children or at least are able to start having children, right? Yeah. So you can't still be a kid. Your brain needs to switch and prepare mm. for the new job, where the new job mm. is allowing you, relatively young human, to not only become a parent, possibly, but also to become a member of society. Because humans are not particularly strong animals in some ways, right? You have to fight and hunt as a team. Mm -hmm. And that's really how the human race survived, is by bonding with each other and sticking out together. So the brain rewires itself in two ways. Number one, there's pruning. There's a huge amount of pruning at play where almost 50%, almost half of all your neurons are gone. The Mm. brain just says, this is my biological clue to get leaner and meaner, if you will. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? Because neurons are extremely expensive to carry. So as a brain, yeah, so the brain is the most metabolically expensive organ of the entire body, takes up a huge amount of energy and resources, not just to make it work, but also just to have all those brain cells. Mm -hmm. So if you don't need them, it's best to get rid of them. Now, what kind of brain cells you don't need anymore? Plenty, because at this point, you can tie up your shoes, you can make your own food, you can find your way home, you can ride a bike, right? All these little neurons that were responsible for encoding every little step of the way, those are not needed because at that point, you can do all these things in autopilot. Yes. So the brain can just get rid of all this stuff in a like spring cleaning. I don't need it. Let's get rid of it. And now let's put all our energy and resources towards reassembling the neurons that we're keeping to make them stronger and better connected. So if you're a brain, you want to actually be a little bit smaller, but more dense. You want to have a higher density of neurons inside the brain. What part of the brain is rewiring and getting stronger? The theory of mind network. This is a very special network that is involved in developing social cognition mentalizing, developing empathy, and the ability to put yourself into another person's shoes, right? So for girls, this remodeling happens a little bit earlier on in life, around age 11, 12, as we hit puberty. For boys, it takes a little longer, around age 14, 15, which many people say this is the neurophysiological correlate of the fact that girls tend to mature neurologically a little bit earlier than boys. Then the brain keeps growing, but all these changes that take place are really the mechanism by which your brain allows you to become an adult. 
-hmm. Now, this process is wonderful and is really the key to keeping society alive. However, it's not painless, right? Mm -hmm. Every time the brain rewires itself, there may be consequences. The Such big as. emotions, right? Ah. The reckless behavior, all this drama <laughs> that teenagers go through, I would say, all the, the weepiness and the brain fog and the sweatiness. There are a lot of neurological signs and psychiatric, psychiatric symptoms that are correlated with becoming an adult with puberty and other adolescence. Fast okay. forward to pregnancy, which obviously only women go through. And something really similar happens another time. So the brain sheds neurons, which just get rid of a lot of gray matter, mm -hmm. not a lot. I mean, relatively speaking, there's, there's some gray matter loss, which in my opinion mm -hmm. is another clue to let go of a bunch of stuff you no longer need, because at that point mm -hmm. you're likely a little bit older. You mm -hmm. need to make room for becoming a mother. Mm -hmm. So the brain rewires itself another time. And once again, this theory of mind network gets an upgrade. And oh, then, so it's the same place. It's the same, same place. Network. Yes. Okay. So the reproductive system is always connected to the same parts of the brain. Right. Okay. The theory right. of mind right. network is a really important one. And then there's the cognitive estrogen network. Yes. So okay. both right. these parts of the brain, which is huge in the brain, really change together every mm -hmm. time we go through these transformations. And so pregnant women, especially after the baby's born, after postpartum, there's a reduction in gray matter, but a strengthening of some other mm -hmm. parts of the brain, like the theory of mind, because now you really have to rely on your intuition. You mm -hmm. literally have to be able to read minds because that baby will not speak to you coherently mm. for a really long time. And you need to make sure the baby survives. You need to protect the baby from danger. You have to feed the baby. You need to function on no sleep. So there's a lot that your brain needs to be able for you to do for you to succeed. Right. Right. So once again, there's the upgrade. There's this super mom brain. Yeah. But there's also baby blues. There's postpartum yes. depression. There's sleepless night. There's brain fog. There's confusion. There's reduced focus, right? All the things that we associate with the mommy brain, usually in a negative way, without thinking, well, but look at all the things that you can do now. Yep. Right? Right. And fast forward to menopause. Again, it's the same brain network. But what happens now? You're done having children. You don't need all those right. neurons that were responsible for having a menstrual cycle, that were responsible for hosting a pregnancy, that were, super, right. you know, that they were making you the super intuitive mom. So it's possible that the brain just sheds those neurons again. There's another pruning going on. Okay. And then the brain rewires itself another time. And we, this is not published yet, but we find evidence that connectivity in the brain is increased after the menopause transition in some parts of the brain this time more frontal so it's more ah. about planning aha uh -huh. yeah. yeah it's more yeah, about yeah. planning it's more about I being like rational it. yes it's more about yeah. being in control so less impulsive less reactive more stable more centered more grounded and if you think of more empathic there's another yes. boost in empathy and there's a there's a boost in well we, we would say emotional transcendence. You would probably yeah. say given fewer F. Fuck. Yes. <laughs> you can say it. You can swear on this podcast. <laughs> you get, you do. I can tell you as a postmenopausal woman, you do give a lot less fucks. This comes up so many times. Yeah. With everyone I talk to, everybody's yeah. like, you know, I just don't sweat the small stuff anymore. In the or yeah. give nope. fewer fucks. But it comes up all the time and they think it's such a blessing in so many ways. 